Today on Garden Fork, how to assemble an IKEA base cabinet. Ready? Here we go. Are ready? Here we go. Be very careful, okay? Just on the edge. One of the Garden Fork mantras is if all else fails, read directions. And I love the Ikea pictographic illustrations of an Ikea how-to manual, but maybe you don't, or maybe you want some additional information, so that's why you're watching me put together one of these. This cabinet is actually for my own kitchen. I've built a ton of Ikea kitchens, but finally I have the money and time to work on my own. This cabinet and a dishwasher are going to be put together to make a kitchen island. There'll be a video about that as well. Link will be at the end of the show. Okay, here we go. As you're assembling this using your book and me, there'll be some subtle differences, even though all these pieces of wood may look the same. But if you look in here and there's a little arrow pointing to something, like a significant hole in here, that's a big hint of how to orient the board, the pieces when you're putting them together. Another thing to look at is this. This is the back of a cabinet, because there's no nice color on it, and this is the front. So they're doing things like that to kind of give you a big hint. Because when you look at all these holes here, you're like, well, you could be overwhelmed like I am. But if all this fails, read directions and watch Garden Fork. We got other IKEA videos as well. If you want to hang the top cabinets, there's already a video for that. Again, the link will be at the end. This way, you won't lose anything. All right, step one. Take your two sides and lay them out such that the, I call this the dado cut. This is going to be the back, much like they point to here, is facing out and out. These two parts are the basis of most IKEA assembly. There is an elongated screw with a short thread and then this round locking nut that will grab onto here. When we assemble it, this grabs on like that and will sit like that inside the cabinet. So if you keep that in mind, this grabs onto here. That is what keeps together IKEA cabinets. So on our instructions here, they have a close-up of which hole this first screw is going to go into. Pay attention. Again, it's, it's all in the details here, but this one drops in here, and I always put them in by hand, and then I use my screw gun. It is really easy to blow out the wood and the screw with a screw gun that you're kind of overpowering. So set your torque setting, that's usually on the top of the cordless drill, to a really low number. I usually put it on like five or seven. That way when we screw this in, oops, it's not supposed to work that way. The torque setting keeps me from stripping out the wood and puts this in just at the right tightness. On the back of the cabinet, these dowels are placed in here. Again, if all else fails, read directions. All right, my mistake, the dowel is going to line up into that hole. This one doesn't belong here because this is gonna go into here. Now we're gonna drop this onto here, like that, and just push that down. And turn it like that, and you're good to go. We take the other side, we line up these pins. The open side faces toward the pin. Done. Nice, huh? So what we have here are the sides and the back of our cabinet. Pay attention to the subtle hole differences and also where the slots are. The slot in the back, it should all connect. There should be a slot all the way across all of these and the backboard is going to go into that. But that's one of those things like you can easily reverse it. You can always just redo it again, but it just saves you a little time to do it the first time, right? But that's not garden fork, is it? Unfold the back and you want the pretty side facing in to the inside of the cabinet. Pay attention to this notch. The notch goes in the top and that is the bottom. This is really done better with two people. Like I said, 
two people and then pull these in like that. And then you should have the bar ready that I don't have ready to put in here. Hold on. This goes under, that goes on. And press like that. So these little clips have a slot, goes into here. Come on. Line this up a little screw hole. Nice. Next, you're gonna secure the back panel to the sides of this. And you wanna make sure this is all tight and nice. And then you're gonna take these little nails and drive them in along the dotted line of the backs and the sides here, all right? I like to use a pliers to hold the screw. It makes it much easier, like that. I'm working on a uh, table, has a really nice smooth surface, but if you're working on something that's kind of dirty or dodgy or on the floor, cut up the boxes that the cabinet came in, open them up and flatten them out to make a clean work surface because you don't want to ding up the sides of the fronts of your cabinet. Learn from me. Front crossbar is the same bar as the back one, just not without the clips, or without the clips. This is a key piece of equipment to the IKEA cabinet world. It basically connects a lot of stuff together and connects the cabinet to a wall or another cabinet, but it's kind of the universal connector thing. And again, it goes in the back corners here, but the screw holes are really important. It has three screws and there are uh, more than three holes. So pay attention on the little diagram here where those go. And again, don't over tighten them. You can use a regular screwdriver for all this. I just like screw guns. So again, key piece goes in, all else fails, read directions. Yeah, if this is your first time watching Garden Fork, we have a whole bunch of DIY. I call it eclectic DIY videos. It's gardening, how to, cooking, home improvement, fix it. Whatever I do in the weekends, I make a video about and uh, just like to share stuff. So we also have an iTunes audio podcast called Garden Fork Radio, if you want to check that out. The links are in the show notes. All right, we have succeeded in building the box itself. You're going to put some little plastic feet on here. Put those on and then lift the cabinet onto the feet. Don't tilt the cabinet because the feet will break. Learn from me. You may or may not have some leftover parts. That's okay. It really depends on how you are affixing the cabinet to a wall or to other cabinets. Um, well, these are my glasses. But go through, if you have any of these round uh, locking nuts left over, that might be a red flag to go see where maybe you missed putting one of these in there, okay? We have another video about putting together an Ikea wardrobe and that talks about how to put on doors with the hinges. Again, there'll be a link in the show notes for that one. On this cabinet, I'm going to put drawers. All right, this cabinet doesn't quite line up, but you get the idea of how to build a base cabinet and assemble the doors or drawers. I just counted wrong with the holes. Not unusual in Garden Fork. Um, so follow spells, read directions. We have a bunch of DIY videos. If you want to subscribe, hit the subscribe button. If you want to watch our other IKEA videos, there's a white dot I call the eye in the sky if you can click on that. As always, all the links I talk about are in the show notes below, our iTunes podcast, our other shows, and more stuff about me and Labradors. So make it a great day. See you later.